guys, it's Jennifer from Live, Laugh, Love to Read. Today I am doing a book review on The Lost and Found Bookshop by Susan Wiggs. This book was really good. I'm giving it four and a half stars. This book had several good things going for it. Number one, it's set in a bookshop. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> number two, it's by Susan Wiggs, who is one of my favorite authors. And number three, it had the cutest little old man in it. What can I say? Four and a half stars. So let's get to the synopsis. Says, there's a book for everything. Somewhere in the vast library of the universe, as Natalie thought of it, there was a book that embodied exactly the things she was worrying about. In the wake of a shocking tragedy, Natalie Harper inherits her mother's charming but, fi but financially strapped bookshop in San Francisco. She also becomes caretaker for her ailing grandfather, Andrew, her only living relative, not counting her scoundrel father. So right off the bat, Natalie uh, lives in, the, I want to say, Sonoma wine country. Yeah, I think that's where she lives. And she has this, uh, she's went to college, she has this really fancy degree, and she has this fancy job where I want to say she does accounting or something, but it's really fancy. It's like she makes a lot of money. She has, you know, 401k, and she has, you know, all, stocks and all this stuff. Everything that she has wanted for her life because she grew up with her single mother and her grandfather and then his, her grandfather's girlfriend, who was um, Chinese, they all lived in San Francisco, Francisco. The bottom part of the house was their bookshop, and the top was their apartment. So, um, now, she, Natalie, always wanted um, stability and security, like, financially, because her mother always struggled, so she went to college, and she did all this. Now, right off the bat, in the very first part of the book... Um, her mother dies. So she inherits the bookshop and she has to be caretaker to her grandfather who has beginning uh, dementia or Alzheimer's. Yeah. Says, but the gruff, deeply kind Andrew has begun displaying signs of decline. Natalie thinks it's best to move him to an assisted living facility to ensure the care he needs. To pay for it, she plans to close the bookstore and sell a derelict but valuable building on historic Perdita Street, which is in need of constant fixing. There's only one problem. Grandpa Andrew owns the building and refuses to sell. Natalie adores her grandfather. She'll do whatever it takes to make his final years happy. Besides, she loves the store and its books provide welcome solace for her overwhelming grief. After she moves into the small studio apartment above the shop, Natalie carries out her grandfather's request and hires contractor Peach Gallagher to do the necessary and ongoing repairs. His young daughter, Dorothy, also becomes a regular at the store, and she and Natalie begin reading together while Peach works. To Natalie's surprise, her sorrow begins to dissipate as her life becomes an unexpected journey of new connections discoveries, and revelations. From unearthing artifacts hidden in the bookshop's walls to discovering the truth about her family, her future, and her own heart. Mm -hmm. So, Natalie's mother owned the bookshop, and their bookshop was called uh, The Lost and Found Bookshop. Um, and she had, her mother had this, you know, affinity for, you know, someone would come in and say, oh, I'm not sure what I'm looking for. She's like, oh, you're looking for this, you know. <laughs> she was kind of bohemian, kind of hippie, kind of, you know, free spirit and free love and all this, you know. And with her gone, um, Natalie tries to step into her shoes and keep it going, but the shop is struggling financially. Now, they do find some really old artifacts in the walls of the bookshop um and you would think that they would like they find something and it's like worth a lot of money but you would think they would sell it and save the bookshop and they don't <laughs> so on and on they find like two or three different things in the in the walls because this is a really really old house um now peach who is the hammer for hire um, is quite handsome, quite good looking, and Natalie starts finding herself 
quite attracted to Peach. He goes by Peach, but his name is Peter. Um, and then his name Peach, he goes by Peach because I, I want to say in, he played football and that's what they called him. I can't remember for sure, but something like that. Or maybe he was in the military. I can't remember exactly. But anyway, his nickname is Peach. And then he has a little girl named Dorothy. Now, Dorothy is like eight, I think. Very precocious. Now, Peach is divorced. Yeah, so. Now, uh, Dorothy becomes quite good friends with Grandpa. And they have these very intelligent and you know, conversations, and they got this cute little relationship, and it's just one of them feel-good books. Um, there's not really that much mystery in it. There's no no killing it. There's no murder. Um, it's just one of them feel-good books, you know, bookshop in little downtown, uh, San Francisco, you know, and you've got your bakery across the street, and you got, you know, the little boutique next door and all that so it's just really sweet really good i liked it i thought it was really good four and a half stars i'd highly recommend it and if you have not read anything by susan wiggs i think you need to because start with this one it was really good i got it from the library for free i belong to two different libraries um and i get books there and then i also have amazon prime so i get books there and then I also um, have my little free library, so I get books like that. I get books at garage sales, thrift stores. Yeah. I try not to pay full price for any of them. <laughs> and that's all I have for today. If you like this video, give me a like. And hey, while you're here, how about a subscribe? And don't forget to check back for more book videos coming up soon. Thanks, friends. I'll see you next time.